All right, these are notes for 3.5. 3.5 is going to, we're going to discuss translations again. We're going to switch over to the quadratic family, which is a unique kind of function. Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of a recap from the previous lesson, just talking about lines in motion, and really not so much lines in motion as just how we do the translation part, and what is H and K again, and how does that work. So looking at kind of a generic version of a function, the X minus H and K reminders, um, those are our left-right movements, our H, K is our up and down. When we talked about lines in the previous lesson, uh, we kind of start with point slope and then just sort of switch it over to, you know, really that's no different than just movement left, right, up, down. And it is a counting idea. And then also, you know, how do you insert those changes into an equation? So we're going to start with the insert into the equation part first. Um, given a right 4 and an up 6 and given our original function, which is the equation of a line, how do we insert those? Um, so basically think about your h and your k again. I'm going to work off of this as my original. And just go ahead and plug in. So right four up six. Remember that um, when you go from the movement into the function, the idea is that basically we can just plug these numbers in to the generic version. So we got to keep in mind that x minus four, while you know maybe the day one or two of talking about it, our brain sort of thinks we're going left, but actually that's right. And the reason is pretty simple. Take that x minus four and you set equal to zero and solve. You're going to get x equals plus four, and plus is definitely a right movement. Um, so you know dropping them in. And what this would tell us is that this graph has been translated four to the right and up six. Now, talking about a piecewise graph, and I didn't use the word piecewise a whole lot with you guys in the previous lesson, but maybe mention it briefly. Piecewise is a combination of multiple graphs. So here we just have three pieces, so really three lines, but in combination we call that a piecewise graph. Some we'll talk about a little bit later on in the notes for today. Um, but just going from, from red to blue, what is the translation? What's the movement? And it's as simple as counting. So pick any point in your blue graph, which is going to be our original, and count to the corresponding point in the red graph. And what are the movements? Um, left two, down two, four, six, eight. So left two, down eight to get me from blue to red. So I'm describing the translations. I'm going to describe them as... Now I've kind of purposely put in the signs. Um, you could just say left two and down eight with no signs, and then as you drop them in, it has to hit you, like, how do those signs work? But I think, again, as recapping, and only from the first day of this, if I drop in negative 2 and 8, negative 8, um, the minus the minus, you know, then becomes the plus. And so a left movement, while you're counting left and you're counting negatively, in the function or in the general version of it, is going to look like a plus, because minus a minus. Okay. Just kind of a quick recap from yesterday. We're going to get this thing moving to quadratics, our new family of functions. Uh, I'm going to leave the, this slide up for just a second. There's some bullets here. I'm not going to read this all off to you, but just kind of quickly discuss what we're going to see here. So we're going to introduce a new family, a new type of function called the quadratic. Discuss its graph and its characteristics with you guys, what's unique about it. And then once we kind of get through the, the unique things about a quadratic and its graph, then it's really moving on to doing the shifting again. So we're right back to translations, left, right, up, down, how we write functions and how we you know, visualize and how we interpret those. And then the very last thing is we'll kind of hit, go back to piecewise and just kind of work a little bit more with uh, evaluating functions. So we did that kind of earlier in the chapter. We'll just kind of come back around to that and see how that works with a quadratic family attached, built into a piecewise type graph. Okay, let's go ahead and get going on this quadratic and see what it's all about. So there are some unique things for sure. And I think the first thing we'll do is just talk about the style of the equation, y equals x squared. We call these our parent functions. So the reason we call them parents is because we don't have like hk built in or any other kind of numbers built into the function. It's just a very generic, very basic version. If you guys think about graphing, um, you know, if you didn't have a unique way to go about your graph, like with a line, you have y equals mx plus b, so use your slope, use your y-intercept. But if you didn't even know that information, we, but you knew how to at least plug in, you could still generate coordinates and draw a line. And same thing here, we can generate coordinates by plugging in x values and cranking out some y's to correspond. So plug in each one of these x's and square them, and you're going to get a set of values look like this. Now, what's kind of unique about a parabola, because you're squaring, is what happens on each side is zero. And I'm going to stop here and talk about zero, zero for a second. So zero, zero is, got a, is unique for us uh, in this graph, which is called a vertex. We'll use the word vertex a lot in the next couple of days. The point zero, zero is basically where we're changing direction. So if you guys remember the ideas of increase and decrease, this function is decreasing, the graph is decreasing. And then all of a sudden right here, it, changes over to increase, and that change in direction is our spot called our vertex. And then if you start checking out the points, you notice some things going on with some patterns here. 
So if we do 1, 2, and 3, and negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3, we get the same set of values. And that's for a simple reason, because you're squaring them. You square a positive number, you get positive, but you square a negative number, you also get a positive. So you start to see these kind of corresponding points on each side of the y-axis, and that's going to help you visualize and draw a parabola. Um, so getting to know those kind of corresponding points, instead of having to do this, this is okay, but it's also kind of time-consuming, but getting the idea of this symmetrical concept. So there is a symmetry idea going on. These graphs have y-axis symmetry, which means one side looks like the other, and so we call that the axis symmetry, which is simply like the visual vertical cut in half, like your face. Your face has got y-axis symmetry. If you imagine each side of your nose, left, right, your face has symmetry on both sides. And then the graph itself has got a name, so we call that a parabola. So these are kind of just some of the unique things about it. Um, vertex 0, 0. We've got a pattern of how these points work because of basically what we're doing with the function. We've got a symmetry concept going on. That line is called the axis symmetry and the graph itself, the parabola. And there's kind of your basic characteristics. Um, all right, let's get into doing some translation ideas. So what I want to do is get that idea of vertex going. And as you look at the different graphs here, we're just going to kind of walk through the different color graphs and start to relate them to, you know, based on the vertex, and then how does this function look when I do x squared. Now, just a minute ago, we did like that y equals negative 5x, and we inserted our shifts, our transformations, into the function. And here we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to kind of take it as from a vertex standpoint and not so much that we're counting from one graph to the other, but if we can just locate the vertex, the vertex will give us the changes. It'll show us the left, right, up, down stuff. You know, we can count, too, as a way to kind of back that up. So just generically speaking, um, H and K would be what we call our vertex. If you go to your the red graph, my A graph, which is one in the middle here, it's got a 0, 0 vertex. And so that's why this function looks like it does, x squared, because there is no parentheses minus H. There is no K to tack onto the end because they're both 0. Now if you go to my B graph, which is the black one, and I find its coordinate for its vertex, its vertex is at 3, 0. Now, if I insert my h and k into my function, it's going to look like, so x minus h, and then plus k, but k is 0. So there's my h being inserted. And so what I'm really not doing is I'm not actually counting. You know, I could, I could just go, hey, it's just right 3, and I could count from red to black. But I don't need to count because I have a vertex which basically counts for me. The coordinate, the location of the vertex is the, describes the movements, describes the translations. If I do the blue graph or the C graph, um, I find its vertex. Its vertex is at 0, 3. So if I insert that change, no change to the x, no left, right. So that's my 0 effect. And then my plus 3 is up 3. And again, like I said, I could definitely count. You know, there's no left, right movement from 0, 0. To get to the blue, there's up 3. So up 3. But we're going to try to get away from counting a little bit and just try to focus on where is the vertex that does the job for us. If I go to my D graph, which is my purple graph, and I look at its vertex, um, negative 4, negative 3, so if I insert those changes, it's going to go like, now as a reminder, right, minus and minus when you throw that. So when I plug that coordinate back in, then my h goes in and my k. Now I did the minus the minus here, just so you guys could see that effect. Uh, minus and minus is plus. Um, something maybe you just want to get used to doing. You know, like I don't think this needs to be done on paper. You're probably just going to, as you do more and more of this, you'll just know like when I go from coordinate to a parenthesis, like in my equation into the parenthesis, the, the h changes sign. So you might just want to get used to that idea, but you know, here's why. So there's the equation for my purple graph and my d graph. Um, just some general things to talk about. So what is a general way to write a quadratic? So we'd have x minus h squared plus k. So this is general, just universal, like everything we talk about, but now we want to get into specifics day by day, like how do we do the translation but unique to our whatever parent our, our parent function is, which is a quadratic. And our vertex would be at h comma k. Okay, let's move on and just do some other things, but that's getting the basic idea going, so we'll kind of sort of get away from, it. well, not always, but at least like saying you don't have to count. You can rely on the coordinate to the job of the, the coordinate of the vertex and just dump it in. You're good to go. Um, so what we're going to do here is write the equation from a visual. And so, so I write the equation from a description, and then I'll look at the visual with you guys. So you don't need this to do the problem, but I would like to have the visual here so you guys can see what's going on. But a parabola is translated vertically in negative 5 units. So now that negative in vertical is describing your up-down movements. Negative is describing it as down. So operating off of this, I'd want to insert those things in there. Um, you know, as I pull this in and think about it, because there's no actual left-right 
I don't need anything there, so that's like a zero, and then my minus five. Or, you know, again, if you're trying to visualize, you could say vertically. So that graph sits here, and we could draw our parabola. If you're doing horizontally three, if it doesn't give you a left or right, you got to trust the sign, right? So like this didn't say up or down, it said vertical, which we know is up or down, but which way, the sign tells us that. If it's positive three, the sign tells us that, so we're thinking positive three. So this graph's going to the right. Sorry, one second. So if I count, right, three, one, two, three, there's my new parabola or my shifted graph. And now I would just insert that in. So again, what I'm doing is right in this spot, I'm putting in my right three, just dropping in three. So I think this is pretty easy to do. I mean, it's the visual, nice to just kind of keep visualizing what's this graph look like. Those kind of set of points that are unique that you want to get used to. But the, doing the idea of transformation or writing these, again, I think just as easy as it was with lines or any other function we're going to look at in the future. Um, here we've got actually an uh, equation for you and then describe the transformations. So can you look at it now? And this is good to go back and forth, back and forth, right? Like here's a direction. Can you write it? Here's an equation. Can you give me the direction? Describe the horizontal vertical movements. Um, if I'm just doing the visual aspect of it, um, is it clear which directions we're going. Now, if you guys take a second to think about it, that minus 5 is actually a right. Again, remember that it's opposite in parentheses, and then that negative 6 is down 6, so there's what our, where our, transformated, our translated excuse me, graph would be. Direction-wise, it's right 5 down 6. So, again, you kind of get used to, after doing several days of this, you guys will definitely get used to it. I probably won't be doing the detail so much of the idea this is opposite or minus and minus back on the previous page, you just start getting used to the, how it works, and, and you guys will. Okay, let's do a couple other things here and wrap this one up. So the last thing to hit is piecewise, and here's a piecewise function, and it's a little bit different than earlier, like yesterday or even earlier in the notes today, where we've got this kind of definition of what's going on. And the way piecewise works is you're going to look at a certain graph for certain values. So you notice over here, um, when I'm running from negative 3 to 0, which is what this is describing, which is our domain, I am on this line. But as soon as I switch over from 0 to positive 3, I'm on the parabola. So the idea of piecewise is for some values of x, you're on one graph. For other values of x, you're on the other graph. And what we're going to do is start out by evaluating and just kind of first um, numerically, which means we're going to plug in, excuse me, and then graphically, like what's going on with the graph. Remember, we did the graphic idea uh, not too long ago, and that's the idea of grabbing coordinates. So it's like a partial coordinate, which I'll tie all that in in a sec. But the first thing you got to do is when you're looking at this value of negative 3 is you got to ask yourself, uh, which category of numbers does it sit in? So is negative 3 a number that's in here, or is there a number that's in here? When you decide it where it goes, you decide what function to use. Uh, negative 3 clearly is here, so because it fits into this domain or this set of x values, I should be plugging into this function. And once you get that idea down, um, pretty simple. Just make sure you use the function that it corresponds to. Now plug in your negative 3 and get your answer. We'll come back to that in a sec. Um, if I'm using 1, you know, which category is 1 fit into? So is 1 a number that's between negative 3 and 0? No, it's not. Is it a number between 0 and 3? Yeah, it is. 1 fits into this group. That means I should be using that function. So when I go to plug in, same thing, I will plug into that function. Now, the other thing, too, we can do is we can talk about it graphically, which we're going to come back to the answer here in a sec, as a partial coordinate, right? So I've got a x value. What we're trying to do is figure out what's the y value. And so for an answer to this question, we can do the calculation or we can look at the graph since we got both. If you go to negative 3 x value here and then you go up to say what's its corresponding y value, I wouldn't need to do the calculation. So really this is going to be probably be kind of a one or the other type question, not both for you guys. But I can say where is it at? It's at 1. By calculation, I would be getting the same thing. So my answer here is 1 or the other half of my coordinate is a 1. Uh, same idea with doing this value of 1. If I go to the next value of 1 and say, what's the corresponding y value? It's 1. So I know what? Turns out the answer to that is 1. My coordinate is 1, 1. And then the last couple things here, remembering how this works with the 5. Well, that's a partial coordinate also. So now you're going, where is the y value 5? So if I go to a y value of 5, which is up here, and I'm not doing a calculation now, and I slide over, I've got an x value of 3. So I can say that value right there is going to be so think of these as coordinates, you know, give you the x, find the y, give you the y, find the x. And then the last little bit of this is, can you describe the translation? If I took this graph and moved it, uh, according to what this says, what directions am I going? Well, I'm going right 2 and down 3, and I could actually do that. I could go right 3, move it right 3, and 
down two and sorry, right two and down three, and you'd see a translated graph. So all the ideas tie in. That's going to wrap it up for our notes on the quadratic.